Welcome to finding eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. So let's consider the example uh, or consider the boundary value problem. Y double prime plus lambda Y equals zero with boundary conditions Y of zero equals Y of L equals zero. Our job is to find the eigenfunctions. So note, that we know if we take y double prime plus lambda y equals zero, if we set lambda to be omega squared, then we are looking at y double prime plus omega squared y equals zero. And this has a general solution of uh, y equals c1 cosine of omega t plus c2 sine of omega t. So if we now go ahead and plug in our um, boundary conditions, so plugging in the boundary conditions, We had y of zero equals y of l is equal to zero. Now y of zero equaling zero just means that we have c1 is equal to zero. Uh, since sine of zero is zero, cosine of zero is one, we just get c1 is equal to zero. And so we know that y is equal to c2 times sine of omega t. Now, if y of l is equal to zero, then this means that we have uh, c2 times sine of uh, omega times l. Oops. So C2 times sine of omega times L should equal zero. If we want non-trivial solution, that means that the sine of omega L must be zero. Okay. So to get a non-trivial solution, then we have that, um, sine of omega times L must be equal to zero. And so that means that omega times L should be equal to N times pi, where N is an integer. And therefore omega should be equal to N times pi over L. Again, N an integer. Oh, I should have specified uh, that this trick of setting lambda equal to omega squared is only if uh, lambda is equal to zero or is greater than zero. So if lambda is greater than zero, then we'll go ahead and set lambda equal to omega squared. And uh, we run through this whole process. We get omega is n pi over L. Lambda was omega squared. So lambda is n pi over L, the whole thing squared. And I'm gonna call this lambda sub n. I need to give myself a little more space. So for lambda greater than zero, The eigenvalues, eigenvalues, 
values are lambda n equals n pi over L, the whole thing squared. The corresponding eigenfunctions so with eigenfunctions uh, are phi sub n corresponding to lambda n. Uh, we are looking at um, uh, sine of n pi over L. Again, because lambda is greater than or equal to, or greater than zero here, our n, we're actually looking at n, a positive integer. Um, we could use negative n, but since we're squaring, we might as well just stick positive. And then uh, we cannot use n equals zero here. So these are eigenfunctions corresponding to the eigenvalues lambda n equals m pi over L squared. Um, if lambda equals zero, then we are looking at uh, y double prime is equal to zero with initial with boundary conditions y of zero equals y of L equals zero. Well, y double prime equaling zero means that y should be equal to c1 plus c2x. y of zero equaling zero means that c1 is equal to zero. So we have that y is equal to c2 times x. And then if y of l is equal to zero, then that means the C2 times L equals zero. And that means C2 has to equal zero. So we have uh, lambda equals zero is not an eigenfunction. Sorry, is not an eigenvalue. Uh, if lambda is less than zero, then we can swap out, uh, we can say that lambda is equal to negative omega squared. So we're looking at y double prime minus omega squared y equals zero with boundary conditions y of zero equals y of l equals zero. We are looking at, um, Our solutions are therefore uh, y is equal to c1 e to the omega t plus c2 e to the negative omega t. Uh, and if y of zero and y of l equals zero, we again get that c1 and c2 have to be equal zero. So if y of zero equals y of l, both are equal to zero, uh, then we wind up getting that C1 and C2 are both equal to zero. And so there are no eigenvalues lambda less than zero. I'm gonna just condense things a teeny bit so that I can, uh, Put our final answer in. So what we wind up getting then is that our eigenvalues are lambda sub n equaling n pi over L, whole thing squared, for n greater than zero, an integer. And our eigenfunctions are phi sub n equaling um, C1 plus 
sine of uh, n pi over Lx. So in the case where we have our y double prime plus lambda y equals zero with our boundary conditions, y of zero equals y of L, both equaling zero, this is what we wind up getting for our eigenvalues and our eigenfunctions. Uh, now let's go ahead and take a look at the next case. Let's consider the boundary value problem, y double prime plus lambda y equals zero with y prime of zero equals y prime of L equals zero. Again, let's go ahead and find the eigenvalues and eigenfunctions. So we'll do the same thing we did last time. I'm gonna start off with a negative case this time around. So for lambda less than zero, let's go ahead and set lambda to be negative omega squared. Then we are looking at y double prime minus omega squared y equaling zero. Uh, and this has general solution, y is equal to c1 e to the omega t plus c2 uh, e to the negative omega t. And so we have y prime is equal to c1 omega e to the omega t uh, minus c2 omega e to the negative omega t. Again, uh, plugging in our, so plugging in y of zero, sorry, y prime of zero equaling y prime of L equaling zero, we wind up getting that C1 and C2 both have to equal zero. Uh, for lambda equaling zero, and we're looking with y double prime is equal to zero. So we have uh, y is C1 plus C2x and y prime is uh, just equal to C2. So in this case, um, then plugging in y prime of zero equaling y prime of L equaling zero, we get that C2 has to equal zero, but C1 can be anything. And so we get in this case that lambda equaling zero is an eigenvalue. I'm gonna just call this lambda sub zero equaling zero as an eigenvalue uh, with eigenfunction. We just need one representative function. We might as well pick C1 equals one. So we'll take our eigenfunction phi naught just to be the constant function one. Finally, we'll go ahead and look again at the case where lambda is greater than zero. So for lambda greater than zero, let's go ahead and set lambda to be equal to omega squared. And we are looking at w or y double prime plus omega squared y is equal to zero. Again, we know that this has general solution. Y is equal to C1 times cosine of omega t plus C2 times sine of omega t. Taking the derivative so we can apply the boundary conditions, we have y prime is equal to negative C1 omega sine of omega t uh, plus C2 times omega cosine of omega t. Once again, plugging in our boundary conditions. So plugging in uh, y prime of zero equals y prime of L equals zero. We are looking at 
y prime of zero would be c2 times omega is equal to zero. So we have that our c2 has to be equal to zero. Uh, therefore, y prime is equal to negative c1 omega sine of omega t. Um, y prime of L equaling zero is this should just be negative C1 uh, times omega times sine of omega times L. Uh, to get a non trivial solution, um, we need sine of omega times L to be equal to zero. This means that omega times L should be equal to n pi or n an integer. And so we get that omega is n pi over L. Uh, this means that we have eigenvalue lambda n. Again, lambda was just omega squared. So lambda n is just n pi over L squared. Um, again, since we are only looking at positive lambdas, we only need to consider positive integers. So here n is greater than zero and an integer. Our eigenfunctions Our original solutions were C1 cosine omega t plus C2 sine of omega t, but we found that C2 is equal to zero, so we're just left with the cosine component. Our eigenfunctions will be phi sub n equal to cosine of omega t, so cosine of n pi over L t. Uh, so here we have, uh, just in general, we have these eigenvalues. And then we also have the eigenvalue from lambda not equaling zero. So additionally, we have the eigenvalue of lambda not equaling zero with eigenfunction phi not just equaling the constant function. So these are our uh, corresponding eigenvalues and eigenfunctions for the boundary value problem with the y double prime plus lambda y equals zero with boundary conditions y prime of zero equals y prime of l all equals zero. In the next video, we will look at two more cases.